Hey guys, GameChief here. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up BattleEye Extended Controls, also known as BEC, to go ahead and do automatic restarts on your DayZ standalone server. So before we begin, I just want to state that I am starting off with where I left off in my last DayZ video. Uh, so if you're confused, I highly recommend you start with that one first. The link is in the description and it also is an annotation on the right hand side of the screen. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I need to do is I need to remote into the machine that's hosting the server. So I'm going to go ahead and remote in. And then we're going to go ahead and download Beck. And there will be a link to this in the description. It's going to be on GitHub. And then you're going to want to click on clone or download. And we're going to hit download zip. And now that's done, we'll go ahead and click on here. Go inside of this folder. And then we're going to go ahead and find somewhere to put this. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the same location that I have some other stuff in. So servers, where I have Steam CMD and the DayZ server. So I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to name it Beck. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of these and drag and drop them. I can go ahead and close that now. Alrighty, and there is a readme file. I do highly recommend you read that. So what we're going to do is we'll scroll down. There's some installation instructions. We already copied that to a folder. And next we need to edit our host file. So we're going to go ahead and navigate to our host file. So we'll go to File Explorer, go to this PC, C, Windows, System, 32, Drivers, ETC, and then the host file. And then we're going to go ahead and edit this with notepad plus plus and we do have this in administrator mode and then we're going to go ahead and add those two lines down here and we're going to add this to the end there and then i saved it and we can go ahead and close this Alrighty, now we got to implement back into our automatic restart system so i'm going to be using method one listed here and that's just going to be to make one batch file that does everything so if you remember from the last video, we have this batch file right here that goes ahead and checks, make sure there's no updates, and then it'll launch our DayZ server. So there is an updated one. The link will be in the description. We're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, click into the raw paste data, Control A to highlight it all, Control C to copy it. And then we're going to Control A, Control V, and it's going to paste everything in. So there's going to be a few things you're going to need to change. So again, you're going to need to specify your Steam login. So in this case, I'm using this account. And then also you'll need to specify the password that you're using. And then you also need to check your DAISY server path. This is the correct path where I have my DAISY server along with the Steam CMD path. Again, this is correct. And then you also need to set a BEC path. So in this case, that's exactly where I put BEC. So that's all good. So this batch file does look a bit complicated at first, but it's pretty simple once you look at it. So it does a couple things. So the first thing it does is it just checks the server to see if it's running. If the server is not running, then it's gonna go ahead and um, close Beck and the server if there's like an extra version of it or something like that. And then it's gonna go ahead and go to the update server. So this is where it's gonna launch and check and see is there any updates. Uh, again, this won't validate, so if you delete a file or there's some sort of corruption, you do need to run that separate update day zbat file. And then once it's done updating, it's going to go ahead and go to start server, which is going to go ahead and start our server. And then this is another line that you may need to edit. So this is our start daisy server line, as you saw in our old file. So this one, you know, specifies our instance ID and, you know, the port along with the CPU count. Um, in this case, this is all correct for me, but if you have any parameters you need to change, this is where you'd want to do it. And then after the server's launch, it's going to wait about 45 seconds, and then it's going to go ahead and start back. And then again, it'll start back, and it's going to go ahead and go to the back path. And then it's just going to go ahead and go back to check server. And this will constantly check your server every 30 seconds and back to make sure they're both running. If one or the other is not running, then it'll go ahead and um, make sure it is running by starting it again. So we're going to save this file. And we'll go ahead and close out of this. And we can close out of this. Before we actually launch the server, we're just going to go through a couple config settings. So inside the back folder, we have the config. And then we have the admins XML. So we're going to go ahead and open this. 
So this is the admins XML file. So this is where you can define admins and they'll be able to do certain um, tasks and they'll have certain privileges through Beck YN game. Uh, so this is where you can change the name and then you'll want to enter your battle ID UID. And if you open your Archon client such as Dart and you connect to your server and you can actually right click on your name and you can copy your battle ID UID. You can also change the name of this and then you can add additional admins. Just make sure that you change the number and increment it by one. So if we want to add another admin, we can copy this, paste that in, change this to two, enter their name, their ID. What group number they're a part of is also important. Um, so it's how you can change commands and privileges that each group has. Um, this won't really be covered in this video. There will be kind of more of an advanced one, but three is perfectly fine for admins. Uh, zero is the one you'd want for a server owner or someone of high privilege. And there is more information available inside the Beck folder. There's this Beck guide right here, and it has a bunch of information. It can answer a lot of your questions. So we're going to go in back in here, and we're going to go ahead and save this. And then the next thing is there is a bad names text file. It's literally just a text file that has all the different um, names that will be kicked if someone tries to join. Same thing if someone says something in game, it will kick them for that. There's the commands file. Again, I'm not going to really go over this much. It's just a couple commands that you can run. There'll be a more in-depth video on that later. The next file is the config file. So this is kind of an important one. So we're gonna go ahead and edit this. And then you set your IP. Um, this is so a local IP. You shouldn't need to change this in most cases. The server port, in this case, the default is 2302. That's what we're running. And then your battle IP path. So in this case, mine would be in the daisy folder, which is where the server is, and then server name, and then battle I. Um, you may have changed this, so just make sure you change this to the correct one that has your battle I um, install in. And then there's a few more settings you can adjust. Um, you can just read through it. They're all documented on what they all do. You can set up whitelisting and stuff like that. But for now, that's good enough. So we're going to go ahead and close out of that. And then we have a scheduler example XML file. So this is just kind of an example of how the scheduler is supposed to work. And it's more of a guide more than anything. So it's there if you need help with the scheduler. We'll close that. And we're going to move on to the actual scheduler that's currently set up. So it's currently set up, the, the first message that plays every 45 minutes is that the server restarts every 12 hours at 12 a.m. MDT and 12 p.m. MDT. So this time right here will be local time to wherever your server is being hosted. So you'll want to change this time zone to reflect your own time zone. Uh, it'll also give a warning two hours before, one hour before, 30 minutes before, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 3 minutes, 1 minute. And then it'll also give a warning right as the server is about to restart. And then it will execute that shutdown command. And then that's where your batch file will go ahead and take over and restart your server. And then again, this is just for the second restart right here. And there is a um, FAQ here. So you can go ahead and see, you know, if you have any questions, this file will probably answer them. It's a pretty in-depth file. If that one doesn't, uh, again, the Beck guide has a bunch of information. And then you have a whitelist file so you can add people. Um, in this case, I recommend opening it in like Notepad++ so it adds new lines. Um, then it's just battle ID UID, their name, battle ID UID, name again. Then we're going to go ahead and go back to our daisy server and we're going to go ahead and run our updated start server .bat. and again it's going to go ahead and check for updates so it's going to log in found that the server was up to date it's going to go ahead and start the server and then what we can do is we can actually make this window smaller and we can just move it off to this side while the server is launching, it's just going to wait a couple seconds before it launches back, just that way there's no timeout error. So as we can wait for the server to launch, and then Beck's going to launch, it's going to create some directories, and then that was a bit too fast so you couldn't see the error message, but if you don't have a bands.txt file in your battle life folder, the server will not launch. So you'll want to go in here. Create new, 
your text document and then you just need a bands.txt file. So it's very important to have that or else Beck will just instantly close. And then we got to wait five more seconds and then Beck is going to get relaunched by the command prompt here. So Beck is launching up. It has to wait about 10 seconds and then it'll automatically connect. And it is connected to our server and it scheduled those 23 tasks. And from now on, it's just going to go ahead and give the warnings and then it's going to start automatically restarting. So I can go ahead and I can close out of this window right here. And if you want, you can actually make this a bit smaller. Move it out of your way. And then this command prompt will continue to run and continue to restart your server, even if you close it manually. So say I close that, it's going to wait a couple seconds. And then it's going to find that for some reason the server is closed, so it's going to go ahead and restart it again. So if we want to, you know, shut the server down because we got to make changes or anything like that, you can either close this command prompt or hit Control C, terminate the job, yes, enter, and then it's no longer going to keep opening it. So I can close this out and it won't relaunch. And that's the end of the video. There's going to be a couple more videos coming out soon about adding mods uh, with the Daisy standalone launcher, uh, along with some admin panel stuff, and a bunch of other things coming up soon. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And that's about it. Have a good day.